Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Talk Liverpool. And before we get into an analysis of this Burnley game, a crucial game in our fight for the top four, I want to give a shout out to my Twitch channel. I actually did a watch along of the Burnley game uh, live on Twitch. All the links are down below and in the description as well. So go check it out. Go follow there. Uh, make sure you don't miss out on any of those watch alongs that we do across the Euros and into the new season as well. Uh, plus all the other types of streams I do. Uh, but Burnley... Let's talk about let's talk about the Burnley game. It was it went about as swimmingly as it could have given everything that happened in the last in the last game with the last minute goal, etc., etc., etc. It was uh, a game which ultimately we kept a clean sheet in, which we scored a number of goals in to improve our goal difference. We look like we've stayed clear of injuries. Uh, we were able to build some confidence and get a goal for a player, Oxley Chamberlain, who hasn't had much um, play and much time on 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 the pitch this season. Uh, a goal for Firmino as well. Um, another solid performance from Thiago. And so honestly, this this performance really just kind of ticked off every box that Klopp would have wanted to tick. Um, you know, it wasn't overly tense. Uh, we weren't panicking. Um, you know, all over, I think it was, it was exactly what we needed, uh, which is very unlike Liverpool because that was about as swimmingly as the game could have gone given the situation we're in. Um, and it did go that way. So fair play to Klopp, fair play to the players for the mindset, the right mindset in the game, uh, executing the game plan that Klopp set them out to, set them out to to play. And um, yeah, all, all credit to them because they did really, really well. Um, we made a number of chances in the first half, which we'll go into in a little bit. Um, even though, and even though we didn't take some of them, which was very frustrating, we kept making those chances. I think that was that was one of the really important things. We kept making those chances, kept threatening Burnley. Um, yes, we were a bit frail and there were a couple of areas where we definitely could have done better uh, defensively. But overall, I think it was still a very um, solid performance by us uh, and one that I think you know Klopp will be happy with. And we got the three points, right? That's all this game was about. We needed to get the three points. And the same as it was against West Brom, however way, by hook or by crook, we needed to get the three points and, and we did. So let's look at the starting lineup. So the back five was exactly the same, um, I think, we know Burnley's strengths. Burnley's strengths are uh, aerially, particularly up front with Chris Wood and Matej Vidra. Uh, with only one of them playing today, uh, Chris Wood, that kind of meant that he was going to have to occupy both of them. Um, and I guess that's possibly probably a, a benefit for us. Um, uh, Nat Phillips is good in the air, loves a good duel um, going up for the ball. Uh, Reese Williams, again, again, quite a, quite a tall player. Um, so... Arguably, probably a very good centre-back partnership against someone like Chris Wood, who who loves to, you know, really bustle with his defenders um, and try and win balls in the air. The midfield was slightly changed with uh, Curtis Jones dropping out and Genie Wijnaldum coming in. I think Curtis probably just needs a little bit more time after coming back from his injury. Um, Wijnaldum come back in the team after uh, dropping to the bench for the West Brom game. And then the front three was the front three. We talked about that last episode with Jota being out. You know, the front three was going to be the front three. There was obviously the issue with Mane and not starting against Manchester United, but that's just not going to be an, uh, an, uh, an issue for the uh, remaining game now that we have against Crystal Palace. But the game started off uh, in a fairly positive fashion for, for Liverpool. Um, we made a very good chance early on with Trent Alexander-Arnold kind of from the inside right, kind of, playing a shot slash cross, deflected off a couple of Burnley defenders and fell to Sadio Mane, like pretty much on the six-yard box, um, sliding in. Definitely could have slid the ball into the net. He wasn't offside and it would have been a fantastic start, but he kind of got his kind of almost heel on the ball instead, which meant that the ball went out for a goal kick. But that was kind of very much just the start of the flow of chances from us in the first half. Um, and we made a number through another one through um, Mo Salah from a great ball over the top. From Andy Robertson, it was pretty much just a straight ball. Mo Salah making that outside to in run that he does, you know, so often, and that's become his trademark. Uh, but blazing over the bar, uh, Thiago also with a great chance, with a great little bit of interplay between himself, uh, Firmino, and Mo Salah on the inside right of the box. But his Thiago shot going wide. Uh, Sadio Mane with another chance as well, and we did make a number of chances, and it, it looked like um, I think. As we continued, as we continue to make more and more, I feel like we possibly got a little bit more disheartened. Like when you know when a couple of them don't go your way, you think, "Is this going to be our day? Are we going to struggle to make a you know a really good chance? Are we going to struggle to put one in the back of the net? Is the keeper going to make a really good save?" Um, but uh, that wasn't the case. Even Nat Phillips had a great chance where he chested the ball down from a corner and was able to just 
you know, he just smashed the ball over the over the uh, over the bar. You know, he did really well against Manchester United in terms of recycling the ball, but this time when the ball came to him on the penalty spot, um, his chest and then strike went way over the bar. But you know, even though we had all of those chances splattered throughout of that, were some very very good chances for Burnley, and they were all they were all kind of really from the same route. They weren't necessarily the long balls up to the defense up up to Chris Wood where he was winning flicks flicks on or there were crosses from wide or whatever they are very much kind of just straight balls over the top um that were just were just going going over the heads of our center backs and Chris Wood was running in behind and and you know it continued in the second half as well and I think ultimately we were actually quite lucky that Chris Wood kind of fluffed his lines a couple of times but also that Chris Wood didn't have much pace and so Nat Phillips and you know Reese Williams could easily catch up with him if he did get in behind but just kind of highlighted to me that the obviously there's still some work to do defensively and you know this won't be our part our centre-back partnership going into next season obviously but you know something we'll have to be wary of against Crystal Palace Christian Benteke will will put will uh will cause a similar problems uh, to the ones that Chris Wood caused us. But it was those straight balls over the top where you can tell the defenders are just drawn by the ball uh, and trying to maintain a line rather than also kind of dropping when the player on the ball has a bit of time and, and they can see that the ball possibly will go in behind them. Uh, it felt like they just kind of pushed up a bit and we saw that against West Brom as well for their goal uh, that Reese Williams just got sucked in a little bit which left the space in behind. Uh, fortunately for us this time, we weren't made to pay for it. But, you know, there's, the danger signs were there and the danger signs were there throughout the entire game. And I'm sure Crystal Palace will be doing the exact same, uh, trying to get Christian Benteke and uh, Wilfred Zaha in behind us um, in Sunday's final Premier League game. But we did, very importantly, get that goal in the first half, right at the end of the first half. It was a Mane breaking down the left, as is often the case. But rather than Robertson making the overlapping run, he made the underlapping run, which he does quite a bit as well. Um, and Sadio Mane played him in, he was onside uh, and instead of playing the ball across the face of the goal, he kind of, uh, Andy Robertson cut the ball back uh, and the ball fell perfectly to Roberto Firmino it wasn't, his finish wasn't directly in the corner, but uh, it was close enough to to the corner that and it had enough pace on it that the goalkeeper couldn't really do much about it um, and it was 1-0, an absolute perfect time to score, um, if we went into the second half, I was afraid that we would possibly start to panic a bit um, obviously knowing that we needed to get the three points uh, and then start doing silly things and you know possibly putting the result in doubt but that first goal uh, just before half time was huge uh, I think both from our side and I think from from Burnley as well I think um, the, not calling out the Burnley fans but I think the atmosphere was very dead in the stadium now I get I do feel sorry for Burnley right you've got one home game that your 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 fans are allowed into and it's against a top team that have something to play for with very good players. And, you know, it's very difficult. Burnley never really stood a chance going into the game. Uh, but, you know, we did see with Brighton yesterday what a home crowd could do. You know, they went on and beat Manchester City, um, obviously with 10 men. But, you know, th that that home crowd could have made a difference. But I, I did, just didn't feel the crowd really got into the game. I think the crowd kind of almost admitted defeat before the game even started, um, which I thought was not the best. But, you know, I, I, I understand it. Uh, but, yeah, we went into halftime 1-0 up and um, exactly the position we wanted to be in. Uh, second half starting was perfect. Like, the first five minutes of the second half was exactly what Klopp would have wanted for. In terms of not even just the goal, which we'll talk about in a second, but but also the the fact that we just kept the ball and, and just kept very composed. We gave the ball away quite a few times in the first half as well, causing some you know problems for ourselves. But... Just the fact that Thiago was getting on the ball, playing those passes into Firmino in that number 10 position, playing them into, you know, the wide players, playing them into Trent and Robertson as well. And everything was just kind of ticking along very nicely. And obviously that was capped off by the goal um, when the ball came out. It was a poor corner by Robertson anyway, but it came out to Sadio Mane, who squared up his defender and just chipped the ball to the far post. And the, defend the Burnley defenders just stood off Nat Phillips a little bit, which meant that Nat Phillips had a little bit of a run at the ball and was able to just power the header in. Keeper again had no chance, but uh, a very very good header from Nat Phillips. Um, and then I think after after that we we kind of relaxed a little bit I would say uh, and let Burnley back in, uh, let them have a few chances at goal, let them get some good crosses in, put Allison under pressure from crosses, corners, etc. Um, and I think this is where our midfield I think I wanted them to step up a bit more. I think Fabinho had an uncharacteristic. Uh, uncharacteristic poor performance day. I think he gave the ball away a number of times. He wasn't always 
um, taking the ball off the defenders. You know, uh, Burnley pressed on really high against Nat Phillips and Reese Williams, and I thought Fabinho could have done a bit better to try and get the ball off the defenders quicker uh, to relieve some of that pressure and then help us break that press. Um, and then Wijnaldum, again, again, I, I don't... Like, I know he's most likely to be leaving the season, but I really don't know what he added to that performance. I literally think he did nothing the entire game. Now, there's not one piece of play, one attacking play, one defensive play that I can even remember him in. And I feel like he was just a passenger throughout the game. And, and you saw, we saw Oxlade-Chamberlain come on later on, obviously, for Roberto Firmino. But playing that midfield position, getting himself in the box and ultimately getting himself a goal. And I would much rather have someone like Oxlade-Chamberlain in the team for against Crystal Palace than Gini Wijnaldum. You know, he's possibly out the door anyway. Now, I'm not trying to bash Genie Wijnaldum because, you know, he will always be a legend because of what happened in that Barcelona game. But I just feel like the second half of this season, possibly since, you know, there's things going on in the background behind closed doors that we're not aware of. He just hasn't been at it. And, you know, he, he was really absent for me in this game. And he was captain of the team as well. I don't forget that, you know, he was captain of the team and he was pretty much absent the entire game. Um, obviously, there's some stuff that's, you know, circulating online as well about his reaction to the Allison goal and all that type of stuff. But just all in all, I think it was a poor performance from him. Uh, obviously, he'll get a very good send off at Anfield. But uh, yeah, just a very poor performance from the midfield overall. But that was not the case for Thiago. He ran the game again, completely fantastically exactly like he did against West Brom uh, and exactly what we needed when we were 2-0 up and we needed to control the ball uh, keep the ball and you know just pass it around and I, I really felt watching the game like if every five passes something went through Thiago we were going to win the game um, and that's pretty much exactly what happened and then Oxley chamberlain wrapped the ball up with a fantastic finish, left foot finish. Uh, really, really happy for him because I want to see him play more. He struggled a bit with the injuries this season, uh, but definitely want to see him more. But that leaves us, guys, with one Premier League game remaining to try and secure and rescue this madness of a season and, and give us a top four finish. And that will be against Crystal Palace at home in front of fans at Anfield, which will, actually I'm sure the players are hugely looking forward to, the fans are looking forward to as well. And I'll be excited to watch the game as well, just to feel the atmosphere. Uh, but we know the deal, right? Three points, that's all we need um, to secure ourselves a top four position. Obviously, getting the three goals again today helped our goal difference, which puts us four ahead of Leicester. Uh, they, go, they play Tottenham on the final day of the season. So yeah, still all lots to play for, but we've got to try and secure that uh, that win against Crystal Palace but uh, I'll be back for the final episode of Let's Talk Liverpool to review that Palace game and hopefully I'm coming to you uh, celebrating our top four finish but uh, that's it for this episode guys thank you all for listening and I'll catch you on the next one